In a previous video, we showed you how we started in-ground composting buckets for our worms. You may not have worms to start your buckets. In this video, we're going to cover how to start composting without the worms and how long it takes for them to find your buckets. Let's take a look at the materials used for composting. It's basically two categories, greens and browns. The greens comprise of garden scrap. And because I know I'm gonna put it in a uh, bucket, uh, smaller, I cut them up and I chop them up into smaller pieces. So garden scrap, food scrap from the kitchen. So carrots, apples, leftover remnants, and then coffee grounds. Even though it is dark brown or black in color, it is considered a green full of nitrogen. And then the brown, the brown comprises your shredded papers, your cardboard, and used napkins. So the used napkins, I also tear them up. So those are our browns and I aim for 50-50, but that doesn't always happen. So sometimes I'll do 70% green, 30% browns or 64% or 60% greens, 30% browns or vice versa. But the aim is equal amount of browns and greens. The food scrap from the garden <laughs> into this thicker bin and my food scrap from the kitchen. Whew, it doesn't smell good. <laughs> oh, it stinks, but the worms will love it. And coffee grounds. So I'm gonna put them in there. And I'm going to mix them real good. Oh. You let that one go way too long. <laughs> it's potent. <laughs> But apparently the worms or, you know, it will aid in decomposition and composting. So it's mixed real good. And I have my water over here. So when I put them in, I'm going to top it off with my shredded paper and cardboard and then water it in. Let's go take a look at the bucket that didn't have any worms in to start off with that I have been putting things in weekly. For further clarification regarding the coffee ground, make sure that it is brewed or used coffee grounds. Fresh coffee grounds are acidic to the worms. Um, they don't like it and it's wasteful. And secondly, I do not use any meat or oily product or dairy product in my composting composition. So let us take a look at a bucket that did not have worms in it three months ago that I've been feeding weekly. So we see lots of baby worms. So lots of baby worms. And the food has just disintegrated into this hummus material. Oh, here's a big worm. Look. So I guess the saying is, if you build it, they will come. Oh, there's a couple bigger worms, see? So they have found it, but we see lots of little ones. So I feed it every week and I continue to do so. I normally put a handful or two of the uh, materials in here. So we'll do that. Put it in, shredded paper on top, and then water it in.
and cover it back up. So it takes approximately three months, at least for this particular bin, for the worms to find it. So an example of what could happen once you start putting compost in a bucket in your garden bed. And just for kicks, let me show you what the bucket looks like when we started off with just a handful of worms. This is three months later. Let us take a look. Ooh, when we first, there are our worms. Look at that. Lots of adults and lots of babies also. And it goes all the way down. And look at the cardboard. And look, look, it's interesting. Look at the roots of plants that's taking advantage of this rich soil. Look at. Okay, look at that. Yeah, when we first started it three months ago, I just had a small handful like this. This is with worms. But even if you don't have any worms, three months later, you will be bound to find something or get something. Now I'm gonna feed this bucket. Gonna feed him. Put in paper, water it in. Cover it back up. Voila. I just want to cover a couple of additional points. If you're going to set this up in your own garden, worm composting has a lot of benefits. They basically make the best fertilizer you can get, and putting them in your bed means that they're going to do most of the work of spreading it out to your plants for you. But there are a couple of things that we didn't cover a whole lot in this video, and we'll make another video eventually about exactly what to feed your worms and how much, but there's a couple of things that you need to know. So we need to avoid things that bother them. So citrus, anything too acidic, like tomatoes, tomato sauce, tomato paste, anything like that, you generally don't want to put in a worm bin. Onions, peppers, uh, those are going to have too many spices in them or they're going to be too hot for them, uh, so avoid those. Other than that, avoid meats and dairies, and they'll eat just about anything else that comes out of your kitchen or your garden. So we hope that this helps you determine whether worms are a good fit for your garden and even if you don't have worms, we hope that it gives you a better idea of how long it will take for the worms to find your composting bucket. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.